Well, earlier I spoke to Justin Forsyth, the chief executive of Save the Children, and the musician Mylene Class, who recently visited Bangladesh with the charity. So, Mylene, you've just come back from Bangladesh, and tell me what most shocked you when you were out there. Um, well, I've travelled around the world, and I, I thought that I'd have a pretty clear idea of what I was going to see. I was going into a slum in Dakar, and I don't think you can ever get used to or even prepare yourself for what you do see. There were children running around that, you know, they're just so weak and so malnourished. They're covered in skin conditions and in rashes. Their growth is stunted, and the mothers are in a real state of desperation because they can't feed their children. I think we can see some of the pictures from your trip to Bangladesh and this I found this particularly moving. Now, tell us about this baby we've seen now. This was really difficult because um, we happened upon this family when we were in the slums and the little baby that you see there is over three months old, nearly four months old and weighs four pounds. So much, like half the size of a normal newborn well, baby. Well, she was born at six pounds so to be losing weight at that rate the mum is too malnourished to breastfeed her child and what you saw me feeding her there I mean they don't even have a formula that they can feed because there just isn't the, the money there so they're actually using a kind of dirty rice water because they don't have the facilities to to clean the water either so the whole thing is just uh, it, it's just a circle that they're caught in. Do you know what's happened to her? Well, at the moment, we're working very closely with Save the Children and we've got, you know, the, the health um, workers out there who are monitoring her. The next day, we sent her to a hospital. A so Save the Children Hospital at that. How on earth are you going to get this message across to many Britons who are feeling pretty hard-pressed themselves? How are you going to get through to them? Well, we work in the UK with child poverty here as well, but it's nothing in comparison to what we've just seen in Bangladesh or where I was just a few days ago in Afghanistan or in Africa. And I think the great British public really care about this issue. Actually, interestingly, last year, since we launched this campaign, No Child Born to Die, and in the first year, we mainly focused on vaccinations. We've had an unbelievable response from the British public. Also, Comic Relief has. And I think the British public want us to do good overseas. They also want us to help children at home. So I don't think there's any fatigue in helping people overseas. We've actually had a, had a record income this year. India's a booming economy, and yet getting on for half, I think, of their children are stunted. Maybe people here will say, well, you know, they should sort that out, not us. Well, they should sort it out, and the Indian government need to do more. And we're launching this campaign in India today, led by Save the Children in India, which is a movement of thousands and thousands of Indians. But the danger is, if we prematurely cut our aid to India, it will actually lead to children dying. So, Justin, what do you want our government to do? Downing Street has been pretty cool on this report this morning. They haven't really grasped it, have they? And what we're really saying to the Prime Minister is hold the summit now on hunger, do the biggest push ever on hunger, because even though we're making progress overall, and the bigger picture is good on this, we've reduced child mortality dramatically globally, down from about 12 million to 7.6 million. Unless we deal with this stubborn issue of malnutrition, all that other progress will stall. And on top of that, not just the kids that die, there's this huge number of children that never get to fulfil their potential because they have this condition called stunting which means that they never physically and mentally develop. But how do you know that summits really have that much impact? They do make a difference. I've actually sat in some of these summits at the G8 and G20 when I used to work in Downing Street. They do make a difference if politicians want to agree practical things. What we had... So, sorry, Miley. No, I was going to say, also, I think there is a cynicism where people think, well, when I give my money, does it really get to where it's supposed to go? I'm glad that I went to Dakar. I'm glad that I got to, saw, to, to, see, to see the health workers on the front line, as it were, uh, and, and who were literally thinking through every single move. They weren't giving out sort of help packages or money in hand. They were thinking through how they were going to stabilise families. Just finally, both of you, what would you consider to be a success from this campaign? I think the overall success is we want to stop 2.6 million children dying. I think that in the West we become consumed by diets, chocolates at Valentine's, mince pies at Christmas, losing the, the baby weights. How much baby weight did you put on? I think that it wouldn't hurt anyone to maybe just lose one pound of, off the top of their coffee in the morning on their way to work and put it in the Save the Children bucket instead. If everyone gave a pound, you'd have 60 million pounds. And it's very easy to say, dying children, those two words don't really mean anything. We've become desensitised to it. Until you're holding a child in your hands that genuinely is dying, then you'd give everything you've got. My name is Klaus the Singer and the director of Save the Children, Justin Forsyth, talking to Cathy earlier.